Wow, what a wonderful way to start a worship service. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, it's a nice thing to be blessed with rain again, right? Nice thing. Oh, I see we have some people that are back from vacation. This is just a little loud, I think, isn't it? It's kind of, okay. So, happy 4th of July to you all. And as we get started this morning, um, just want to say a couple of words to our veterans and to our people who have done so much and have given so much, you know, in the name of being patriotic and and to in the name of being the people who support our country, who care about our kids and about our future and all that kind of stuff. We love you and we bless you for your service. We love you and we bless you for your service. And God blesses you for your service. Would you stand please and let us honor you today? Yeah. All right. Good, men and women today, that's awesome. Okay, so today, as we celebrate the 4th of July, this is a day that we're going to be talking about strength. And strength is being able to hear the voice of God. Amen? Amen. Let's say together our call to worship. Strength is commanding the wind and the sea to obey. Strength is wearing the armor of God. Strength is standing with the powerless. Our strength comes through our faith. We come to worship our God who cast his vision of strength. Let's pray, everyone. Precious God, we are just so grateful to be here with you today, to worship you today on this July the 4th. We're thankful for our veterans. We're thankful for our active military. We're thankful for people who work in jobs and in nonprofits and people all over who support this vision of wholeness and goodness and freedom, God, in this country. And so, Lord, we ask you today that you will center us Center our hearts, quiet our hearts, Lord, that we might hear you speak to us. Lord, help us to really hear you and to really trust you. As we listen, Lord, remove the needless armor that we have, Lord, that we might hear you and that we might hear the call of people who need you as well. Grant us calm today and give us joyful hearts and ready minds that we might be open to your grace. As we lift this service up to you, O oh God, be with us, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Chapel Hill. My name is Kara Coffey. This is Scott Hall and Carrie Turner. And um, I invite you to stand and sing with us as we sing about this all-powerful, untamable, indescribable God of ours. Thank mm-hmm. you.
Amen. So we love our band, and you know, every week as we come together in worship, we are so thrilled to have our Facebook family that stays with us too, even though they can't be here. We're glad that you're here with us on Facebook. So I get to introduce uh, Pat Courtney, who does everything, manages all of our PowerPoint, our office, and her mother Betty, I guess she's not here, but it's her birthday this week as well, huh? So, happy birthday, Betty. And Randine Bisoza, who is the person who manages our little broadcast thing here and does so many of the things for us. We're so grateful that you're here today with us, Randine. Also, Debbie and Mamie, who have changed all of our backgrounds, put all these pretty things here. I'm not sure if Jean Johnson is the one who put the flowers here this week or not. Grace did, Grace did, Grace did the flower. Okay, so Grace Turner did our flowers, and they're beautiful. Thank you so much. So it's time now that we go to this God of ours in prayer. And... As we go to God in a prayer this weekend, you know, there's just a lot of things that are always going on in our world. This last week I was thinking, because we've been talking about crisis here, we talked about Jesus still in the storm this last week. This week we're talking about David and Goliath, and there's a lot of things that are happening in our world that we just have to trust God to move through life with us, you know, at all times. But I can remember this last week we had, I believe, what, two people that were in the hospital this last week. Across the, a week, we had a serious car accident with another one of our members. We had a lot of, you know, there's just a lot of things that are happening here all the time. Most usually, everything is so blessed, but we trust God to be with us, whether there are storms and whether there are terrible things that happen, or whether... You know, it's just sunny and beautiful and everything is perfect. But God sees us through it. Amen? Amen. God is strong and God is powerful. And he sees us through it. So let's go to this God of ours in prayer. Precious God, we are able to rest in the knowledge that where you are, we also are. And where we are, you are with us. You're with us always. You love us. And your loyalty surpasses our wildest dreams. It's a loyalty that persists no matter what happens, Lord. Through all terrors, it survives despite all the betrayals that happen in our lives. And it endures for all of our generations. Greater love has no one than this, that you have laid down your love for the life of this world. Today we ask you to come and be with us, God, and to grant us the faith and grant us the humility to yield to you, to yield to your power, that you might fill us with your grace. Fill us with humility, O oh God, that we might really believe you, that we are who you say that we are, and that we are what you say that we are, and that we are capable, and that we are safe, and that we can follow you. Endow us, O oh God, with this faith, and give us the trust that it makes to submit to your will. God of us all, we rest in the knowledge that wherever you are, we are, that there you shall be also. Lord, I lift these people up to you. I lift our church to you. I lift our community to you. I lift our world to you. Oh, Lord, for those who are sick, send your healing. Lord, particularly, you know our needs today. We give you thanks for times of great joy, for anniversaries, and for all the birthdays that happened this week. This was a huge birthday week here. And Lord, we just give you thanks for that. But most of all, O oh God, we thank you for Jesus, who came that we might have life, and that we might have it abundantly. And we lift this prayer to you in his precious name. Amen. Amen.
The peace of the risen Christ is with you. (laughs) And Facebook family, the peace of the risen Christ is with you as well. You all are invited to turn around, wave at everybody, and say, God bless you, and greet is a sign of God's presence with us today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, Chapel Hill. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your words proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. As the scriptures are read, you are invited to stand, sit, or kneel. Whichever position creates an attitude of reverence and focus. Hear now these words from Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9, and the 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 8 through 11, and 45 through 46a. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I may remain seated uh, for our next hymn, Trust and Obey. Yeah. 
to thank you, Kara, for having planned that, and Kara for doing such a great, great job seeing that. You know that song always puts me back in about four or five churches that I've served. <laughs> it has always been a favorite of lots and lots of people who have been very, very faithful through the years. And as you were singing it, I was reminded of the treasurer of the last church that I served, but that was her answer to everything that happened in life, right? And she was right. You know, it's a faith thing, trust and obey, right? Let's go to this God of ours in prayer as we go to the Word. Precious and holy God, we are here to worship you today. We are here to connect with you in a way that's powerful. We've been through a year that's been completely crisis driven for so many of us, oh God. And we need to hear your voice. We need to know that you are with us today. We need your leading every day of our life. And so God, today may the words of my lips, may all of our hearts be acceptable to you you are our rock and you are our redeemer and boy we love you we absolutely love you so we lift this time to you because we need to hear from you today as we ask it in jesus precious name amen, amen. so this morning i was on my way here and it was raining like crazy and there was a wreck and i heard these words come out of the radio. I was driving along, and I was thinking, okay, Jesus, time to steal the storm, right? And it was from a band called Bethel Music that says, So I have set in every place, I set every star in place so that you would remember my name. I made it all for you. Amen? Amen? This is our God. I set every star in place. I made it all for you. <laughs> for you. So that we would remember God's name. Last week we talked about Jesus still in the storm and about the storms that happen in our life. And, well, you know, crisis is just a part of our life. And it's not those things we know we like to talk Stay up, up, up all the time in church, but really, crisis has been a part of our life for a long time. We've seen it on TV. There's so many things that are going on in our world right now. And so today, we are going to a passage that is at a true crisis point in Israel's life and in their history. And it is the crisis of this gigantic Goliath, the giant who is going to defeat them, they think, maybe. And what we see is that for 40 days there are troops and they are camped out on mountains. The Israelites are on the mountain here, the Valley of Elah is here, and then the Philistines are on the other side. And for 40 days they have been listening to this monstrosity of evil calling them names and insulting them and terrifying them, right? And shaming them because they're not willing to engage with him. And, you know, we can't really blame him for that. He stands about 10 feet high. His armor weighs, just his upper armor weighs at least 125 pounds. And his iron spearhead, just the head on his spear weighs 15 pounds, the Bible says, right? And he challenges God's people. And all those ways that he names and he shames and he does that goes to the very core of their identity. It gets into their faith. You know, you think about it for a minute. The Israelites are people who are strong because they are the children of the Most High God. Amen? Amen? They are the children of this God of Israel. But he challenges their identity. You know, they believe they cannot be defeated because God is with them. And he challenges that. 
He threatens their very security, their homeland, and he completely threatens all their well-being. He threatens them and, you know, they can begin to see themselves being completely dominated and their life changing forever. But when we look at this scripture, we learn what kind of God that we meet when crisis threatens us. So today, what we see is that 40 days after this crisis begins, King Saul, who is their anointed king, is set aside to be their spiritual and their military leader, right? He is supposed to defend them in crisis, but he has absolutely no faith. He is absolutely terrified. And because of that, all of God's people have this sense of hopelessness. You know, our spiritual leader doesn't even have the faith to defend us. Now what are we going to do? And so there's two keys, I think, that we need to know about the Bible. Usually, almost every crisis that we face, almost everything that we do in life, we can find the roots of how God deals with that and how God works in our Bible. So in the Bible, the number 40 is very, very significant as the number that's associated with God testing us, okay? And our need to be faithful, our need to pass the test. And the testing of God's people in over a hundred times in scripture and their faithfulness brings about a new thing that God is doing. It brings about new things that God wants for God's people. And we are able to see God's faithfulness move forward after crisis. The number 40 also signifies a new generation of God's people to receive the blessing of the Lord. And so, let's see, do we have our slides up? Okay. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is tempted by the devil to prove his identity after what? 40 days of fasting, right? And the devil does everything to try and move him out of understanding his identity. But the Son of God remains faithful. And because he does, God blesses him and he moves into the world and begins to heal and preach and save God's people and then goes on to the cross, right, to save us all. In the book of Exodus, after 40 days of testing through fasting and through a lot of hardship on Mount Sinai, Moses proves that he is absolutely faithful to God. And because of that, God gives him the knowledge of how to lead God's people when he receives the Ten Commandments. And so the number 40 symbolizes hardship. And it symbolizes our need to be faithful. It also symbolizes a new generation. And what we see is that after wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years, God brings this whole new generation of Israelites to finally cross over into the promised land. Amen? For those who were not faithful, it was supposed to have been, what, an 11-month journey, I think? It lasted for 40 years, and God brought an entirely new generation into faithfulness. And so these were the children of slaves, and yet God blessed them and brought them into the promised land and blessed them. So we have to see this because after 40 days of terror and shaming and all these threats and all this lack of faithfulness from leaders and from people who should know better. This new generation is rising up. A new king is rising up to lead God's people as this newly anointed David walks onto the battlefield. And he is faithful. He hears all these same words 
that Saul and all the Israelites had heard that had just paralyzed them in terror, right? And then said, don't let anyone lose their courage. I will go. And to the giant, he says, God will what? Deliver you into my hands. And God was faithful. After 40 days, God moved David to slay this giant, to restore order of life and the good life to the Israeli people and to bless them. After 40 days, the terror is over when David is faithful because God's servant defeats this giant and saves God's people. Crisis is over. General George S. Patton knew some things about crisis and as a combat general during World War II with just one crisis after the other, he had to say this about dealing with crisis. He said, a good solution applied with vigor now is better than a perfect option applied 10 minutes later. Doing nothing is not an option. But I want to say to you today, people of God, that the good solution that we look for always is for Jesus to come and to lead us. Amen? Amen. On this Independence Day, what we celebrate together today is God's leading us into freedom from slavery to sin and death. And the Son of God being the leader, being the one who saved us with his own life. So, today we hear this story about defeating this giant. And I have to say, you know, there's not a 10-foot, nasty, mean giant that's standing here, but every single one of us have seen giants in our lives. At some point or another, we have seen crosses, and we have seen difficulties, and we have seen things that threaten us in ways that we just wonder where God is and if God is going to really, really be able to defeat this and to be with us. But our peace and our well-being comes from our God. And we defeat every giant every time we are able to trust our God. I think so many of us have experienced crisis this past year. You know, we, with our health, with our jobs, we've had family issues, we've had loved ones, we've had all kinds of really traumatic things that have happened in this past year. And really, almost every aspect have, of our lives has changed with this pandemic, right? You know, one of the things that's changed for sure, my husband is a contractor, and all of his supplies cost times four now, right? Almost everything is hard to get a hold of. We thought about buying a new air conditioner, but we discovered it would take us, what, four months to get one, maybe? So things are different now. In a lot of ways, they're very, very different. But as God's people who read our Bible and understand how God moves in our world, we have to understand that giants and things happen and they come in all different sizes and they come in all different kinds of shape. There's all different kinds of testing that happens in our life. And there are all kinds of things that we struggle with. But there is the 40-day truth. That is a truth from Scripture. Maybe it's not always exactly 40 days, you know. But God is faithful. And when we stand firm in our faith, God is present with us despite what things look like around us, despite these gargantuan fears and anxieties that come despite everything that tries to tell us that it's never going to be okay again, God is still with us. 
You know, one of the things about giants, they're liars. Giants are liars. And giants tempt us to believe that it will never end, that all of the fear and that all of the trouble will never be over, and that a new calm will never come again. But see, Jesus comes, and through the Holy Spirit, Jesus sees this thing very, very differently and, and moves into our life. And he leads us to the still point of our faith. He defeats the giant because he loves us. And then he leads us to peace. Jesus never leaves us. He never forsakes us. You know, these giants come and they rage and they bluster and they tempt us to believe that we are less than what God has said that we are. And as they rage and as they bluster, the Holy Spirit comes and works in us by faith. You know, there's a spirit of humility that grows in us. We defer to the leadings of the Holy Spirit. The longer that we listen when the Holy Spirit comes, and we believe that we are who God says that we are, and that we have all that God says that we have, despite how we feel, despite all the circumstances that are around us, despite all of the people who are terrified, we can keep on following. You see, we keep on loving. We keep on trusting Jesus. We keep on trusting that he is with us. Almost 10 years ago, I was the pastor of a border church, and I've told you guys that we had a, just a terrible flood. It was a generational flood. They'd never had one that was that bad. It just completely devastated the community. And hundreds and hundreds of homes were just destroyed. People were homeless. Oh, it was just unbelievable. And I found myself, and, and you find this, I've noticed this for Rick Wilkins too, we end up being, the Methodist pastor always ends up being the person that coordinates long-term recovery. That's just what happens, right? <laughs> but really in my life, you know, I had been in ministry for an awful lot of years then and had been through a lot of stuff, but I had just never seen anything like that. And I was completely overwhelmed. And my giant was sadness and just an awful lot of exhaustion. But about two weeks in, Bishop Dorf, Bishop James Dorf, and Barbara, his wife, and Bill Henderson came to walk the disaster with me. We walked and prayed and walked and prayed and prayed with people. There were so many people that were struggling, and our bishop came, you know, to love people in Jesus' name. But I will never forget the moment that he walked into our church there were 25 people that were training in our dining halls to be people who could counsel and people who could do assessments, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. And Bishop Dorf walked into the door and he said, Grace and peace to you all. I just want you all to know that I am Becky's bishop, James Dorf. He said, and we love you and we support you, and we are going to support you with our prayers, and with our presence, and with our gifts. We're going to help you with anything you need. But I need for you to understand one thing for me, he said. I want you to understand that you, or any people you serve, do not have to be a member of our church or any church for us to help you and for us to love you. Because no matter who you are, Jesus loves you and so do I. And I just remember, you know, he's 
prayed over us and the spirit of God just poured out so rich and so powerfully into that room. And all of these people that had just been exhausted in me, you know, just been exhausted with all of this disaster, all of a sudden we had life because God was good and God had sent his spirit and it came through our bishop. It was just an amazing moment. You see, we knew that Jesus was with us and that he was there. The hopelessness was gone and that he would continue to be with us and it would all be okay. Church, Jesus is with us today. He is with us every day. He is with us always. And he defeats the giants and he gives us life. And so now, as we begin to prepare our hearts for communion today, we will meet him in the bread and in the juice. We will have his presence really with us. And so as I say these prayers now, let's lift our hearts to Jesus. Let's let him in and let's let him give us his life. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, we know that in crisis, in every day of our life, that you were always standing with us. We may not see you, but we know that you are with us. We know that you love us today. And so, Lord, for all the people that are here with us today, people who might be in crisis, people who have children that are in crisis or family members in crisis, Lord, peace be still. Send your peace and send your goodness here to love us. Lord, as we come to this communion now, we ask that you sanctify our hearts that you forgive us, that we might receive you today through our communion. Lord, we lift this time to you in Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Um, you may uh, remain seated. I know some of you opened your little, I don't want to, you know, spill the excitement. Um, uh, this next song is called Take Courage, and um, We've done it for pray with a few times. We haven't really done it as a congregational song, though, so you're welcome to just listen if you like. You're, of course, welcome to sing along um, as well.
Church, Christ invites all of his people to come to the table of life, to receive his presence, and to receive his grace through the bread and the cup. Today, Jesus is still declares to us, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me. And anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. We invite you now to spiritually unite with Jesus Christ as God's child for whom he gave his life as we partake of Holy Communion. According to the Gospel of Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took bread. He broke it. He blessed it, and he gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and he gave it to them. Later, he took the cup. He blessed it, and they recognized him, right? Come, Holy Spirit, on us gathered here now and on these gifts of bread and juice and make them be for us Christ's body and blood. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, may our eyes be opened as we receive the bread and the cup today. And now as God's people, let us say together that prayer that Jesus left us all by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Everyone has their cups and their bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Let's open our packets now, and in the presence of Jesus, let us share the bread of Christ. And in the presence of Christ, let us open the, the wine that we have and share the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. 
grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as we have received the body and the blood of Christ, and it's now time for us to give our first fruits, okay, to give our offering. And so let me just say that we're always so proud and so grateful for this church. It's wonderful. You give and you are just wonderful to take care here in this community. And so as we go now to prayer, I just want you to bring everyone with you, everyone with you in prayer that needs a touch of the grace of God today. Let us pray. Precious and holy God, we ask you to bless our offering, to bless our givers, to bless this church, to continue, God, to walk with us. We just give you thanks for the Holy Spirit to be with us all. We thank you in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.
then just a couple of announcements, you all. And um, be sure and remember to register for the Labor Day Retreat. We have the opportunity to go to the most beautiful place in the world together as a church. And we need to get registered for that, all right? So Brian and Karen will be back here again this next week. Let's make sure that we get registered to go. Even if we only go for Family Day on Saturday, let's try to get everybody out there, okay? Um, this next Saturday, we're having our next church work day. And it's really important. It's, you know, we have been uh, isolated from our church buildings for a while. When you drive by across the back part of the property, you can certainly see how many things need to be done to make this place look beautiful and to start to welcome our guests back as our sanctuary is getting ready to open. So Bobby Ogle will be leading this next Saturday, July the 10th. There's big jobs, there's little jobs, there's a lot of people that are needed to do this. And we're gonna start at 8 a.m., all right? We had thought we would, start, uh, we would reopen this next Sunday, but I got work from our contractor on Wednesday that were delayed again in the construction, so we're not really sure. I'd like to think that it's going to be the 18th, but I would just imagine it's probably gonna push back a little further than that. So please be in prayer for all the people who are working on our church and for our board as we struggle to uh, get this thing open again. Are there any more announcements, anybody? No? All right. So as we are sent forth, we remember that we have a God of hope that loves us and is always with us, right? Amen? So, receive this benediction. May the God of all hope be with you. May the God of all hope open your eyes. May the God of all peace still your anxious mind. May the God of all love fill your heart to fullness beyond all measure. Go now in the hope and the peace and the love of God. And may the grace of the Lord of Jesus Christ be with you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.